Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sri Ram and in this brand new game dev series, we will be creating Hangman. Yeah, that's right. We will be making a full version of the famous word game using just Scratch. The finished project will involve accepting a word and checking for corrections along with the epic Hangman animation. Super exciting stuff, so let's get started. Before we go on, here is a nice bonus for you. Rather than starting off from scratch, you can use all of the game assets and images that I made by myself. To get this file, click on the link in the description labeled downloadable files and download the file labeled start. Also, if you are stuck with some bugs during any part of video, then you can download just that particular file and then move on with the tutorials. Once you import that file into Scratch, you will be greeted by the background along with a host of hidden sprites. When the time comes, I will explain what each sprite does, for now don't worry too much about them. To start off, go into the stage and when the green flag is clicked, broadcast a new message called init letters and wait. Following this, broadcast another new message called init circles and wait. Finally, broadcast a new message called start game, this time without any wait. This is fairly straightforward. On receiving init letters, we will set up the clones of the keyboard letters themselves and on receiving init circles, we will set up the clones of the circles which will be over each key, thus giving the impression of a proper keyboard. You'll see how this plays out. Great, now create a new variable for all sprites called game over. I'd recommend sticking to my naming convention. Name all the public variables for all sprites with all uppercase and the private variables of a particular sprite with all lowercase. For a boolean variable, add a question mark to the end. As you can probably guess, the game over variable will keep track of whether a game has ended or not. Now. Create another variable for all sprites called game mode. This keeps track of which part of the hangman game the user is currently on. This could be the accepting stage or during the guessing stage and so on. On receiving init letters, set game over to be no and then set game mode to be accept. And that's it for the stage. Extremely simple stuff. And without further ado, let's program the keyboard letters and circles in order to mimic a hangman keyboard. Here is our objective. We would like a keyboard that looks something like this. You can imagine a grid encompassing this whole area. Notice in this case, there are 10 letters in each row, thus making 10 columns and 3 rows. Each square in the grid will contain a circle and a keyboard letter. One final thing I want to mention right away is the working of the tile x and tile y values along with the index. The index starts from 1 at a and then increments by 1 each time until we get to z. However, the tile x value starts from 0 and goes to 9 while the tile y value goes from 0 to 2. Perfect. Getting back to scratch, go into the keyboard sprite and let's start with the first message. Make a custom block called set up list, making sure to run without screen refresh. Place this block immediately after receiving the message. Perfect, we'll get back to this block definition in a second. For now, create a new list called letters for all sprites. This is the list that the custom block will set up. What will this list contain? Well, it should be quite obvious. It will contain each letter in the English alphabet. If you head over to the costumes tab, you can see that each letter is centered as a different costume. The names of the costumes are also important. They correspond to the particular index in the grid that I mentioned earlier. Good, we must define the block that we are using. First, delete all of letters Otherwise, this list will just keep growing indefinitely when we add stuff each time. The next thing we must do is add each letter in the alphabet to the list as a separate item. 
It is a bit time consuming, but it is only 26 items, so they can be added quite fast. Just make sure that you are always adding the lowercase letters and not any uppercase ones, because this could lead to some problems. Alright, that will set up the list. There are a few variables that we need to create and set up after the list, so let's do those too. Create a variable called begin x for all sprites. Then create a variable called begin y for all sprites. Create a variable called number of columns for all sprites. And after this, create a variable called number of rows for all sprites. For now, that will be it. Set begin x to be negative 190 and then set begin y to be negative 40. These represent the top left coordinate of the tiled grid. To get back to our sample, they refer to this particular coordinate on the screen. Fairly straightforward, so let's move on. Set the number of columns to be 10 and the number of rows to be 3. I've already explained why this is the case, so let's proceed to set up the correct size. Our objective is to fit each of these letters within the square of our hypothetical grid. In other words, to get the size to be slightly smaller than the tile width. Set size to tile width minus 1 divided by 28 multiplied by 100. This may be a bit confusing at first, but it should make sense. 28 is the width of each costume. Tile width divided by 28 gives the magnification. And we multiply this by 100 because we must input a percentage. It's kind of like this. If we want to double the size of an image, we set the size to be 200%. To triple it, we set it to 300% and so on. We use tile width minus 1 instead of just tile width to make the size slightly smaller than the tile width. Perfect. Now create a custom block called set up clones making sure to run without screen refresh. Place it after setting the size. Within this block, we will be using two separate custom blocks, so let's create them first. The first one will be called get values at index with an input of index. Make sure to run without screen refresh. The purpose of this block is pretty simple. Given an index input, we would like to get the output of tile x and tile y as well as that of the particular letter in question. So getting to our currently hypothetical grid, for an index of 1, we must get the letter a as well as the tile x and tile y values of 0 each. We must enclose these inputs in variables, so let's create them right away. Create one called tile x for this sprite only and then create another variable called tile y for this sprite only. Set tile x to be index minus 1 mod number of columns. Then set tile y to be the floor of index minus 1 divided by the number of columns. If you've worked with tiled lists, then you should get this. First, we must decrement by 1 because the tile grid starts from 0, 0. Then, dividing it by the number of columns will give us how far down it is. Well, technically the floor of that value. The remainder on the other hand gives us the tile x value and that's what mod is used for. Great, now create another variable called letter for this sprite only. This will just be set to item index of letters. I don't really think there's anything to explain here, so I'll just move on. Create another custom block called go to tile x with an input of tile x and tile y with an input of tile y. Here, set x to be begin x plus tile x multiplied by tile width plus tile width divided by 2. Set y to be begin y minus tile y multiplied by tile width plus tile width divided by 2. The nesting here is quite important, so make sure you got this right. Anyway, this may look complicated, but it's really pretty simple. Begin x, begin y 
refers to the top left point. So to go to the center of the top left tile, we change X and Y by half of tile width. This ensures that the grid tile is perfectly snapped. All right, let's quickly create the clones. Create a variable called clone for this sprite only. Initially, set it to yes. Show and then create another variable called C for this sprite only. Set C to 1, repeat 26 times and each time get values at index of C, then go to tile X and tile Y, then switch the costume to C and finally create a clone. Increment C by 1 at the end of the loop to go through each letter. Outside the loop, set clone to be no and finally hide. That was a bit of work though it is not too hard to understand. The clone variable simply allows us to distinguish between the clones and the sprite itself. The clones will have it set to yes, while for the sprite it will be set to no. And that is it. Test the program and that's nice. We have a near perfectly aligned grid. There's still a lot of work to do, but this is an excellent start. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.